I have been working in tech for nearly nine years now. And over the last 12 months, I've been working specifically in AI and I'm not going to lie, it's been a huge game changer for me. If you've been watching me for a while, I've been talking about how I've been trying to learn Python, trying to learn all these AI ML tools just to get my foot in the door and just become better and more familiar with the tech in the AI space to the point where actually within my company, I was transferred to a team in particular to work on AI. So I'm really excited about this. Now, first, why should you even care? Well, if you look on YouTube, if you look on tech Twitter, if you look at the latest and greatest tech conference CEO, give a talk, it feels like every other week there's someone even on Bloomberg as well saying the exact same thing, which is AI is coming for your job. And I mean, they're not wrong. The math checks out like you look everywhere from when I when I go to Popeye's drive through, there's no longer a human speaking to me. It's AI that's listening to me and correcting me and giving me all these different options in ordering food. I mean, I can literally now build that very thing on my computer within what, a couple of hours. But the thing is, if you're in a situation, which we all are, you can do two things. You can either pivot or you can panic. And this was me a year ago. That's actually not even a year ago, more than a year ago. Like literally a couple of friends and I hit the pivot together and none of us are broke right now. None of us are working 70 hour weeks. Well, I, technically this week I'm working like 60 hours because it's just a busy week. It's not normal. It's usually 40 hours, if not less. And now when I actually interview for a job in the AI space, I'm not as nervous as I used to be because I put in effort and I knew exactly what to learn. And so that's why today in this video, I want to give you that very playbook. You don't need a PhD. There's no five year plan to do this. Just a path that you can start literally tonight. These are the exact things that you need to actually check off to get a job in tech and not just tech in AI tech in particularly. So let's start with number one, the first thing, which is Python. So why this language over the hundred others out there? And here's my real life checklist and why I love Python so much. Number one, new machine learning libraries almost always drop in Python first. But the thing is, if you don't know Python and you have to wait for someone to rewrite them in Rust, guess what? You're already behind everyone who's already building it with Python. Number two, if your code is failing at 2 a.m. and you don't want to wade through a maze of brackets, clear, straightforward Python syntax helps you fix errors faster than overly clever code ever will. Now, another thing that I really like about Python and why you need to learn it is that Python has a single ecosystem for the entire pipeline. And I mean this literally number one, you can literally scrape web data with beautiful soup. You can manipulate that very data in NumPy, then build a quick API in Flask and then send files to S3 with Boto3 all without jumping between multiple languages or frameworks. Literally, you can do this all within Python. Insane, right? I think another really cool thing about Python are just the cool nuances that you have in it. For example, there's a van or virtual environment, so versions stay frozen. There's a requirements text file, so no one gets the dreaded works on my machine problem. And then you also have PyTest, that scream if something silently snaps, right? And that's it. Recruiters want to see that you know how to package code freeze dependencies with a virtual environment and include a few PyTest assertions. So Python is extremely important. Make sure you learn this. I'm, and by the way, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give it like a particular month by month, uh, month by month roadmap and exactly how long it should take you to learn everything else. Okay, so let's move on. So let's move on to the next part because once, once the language is solid, when you know Python decently well, it's time to learn about tools and I mean libraries. And as when, and when it comes to talking about libraries, there are four particular libraries that I actually live in right now, which are um, there's NumPy, there are Pandas, there's Matplotlib or Seaborn, and last but not least, Scikit-Learn. So first let's start with Pandas. Oh, actually, no, let's start with NumPy. So when it comes to NumPy, you can replace a for loop with something we call a vectorized NumPy call. And what is crazy about this is that you'll watch a 30 second wait fall to a blink of an eye and like it's done. 
Like, it's kind of crazy. I still remember the first time that this happened to me. I thought the script literally crashed because it finished so freaking fast. Then when it good of that, the next thing you want to learn are actually or is pandas. And when I think of pandas, I like to kind of think of them like the janitor. And I'll explain why in just a second. Let's just say you're working and your boss hands you a 90 column CSV with missing values. On top of that, you get weird encodings and dates. Guess what? Posing as strings. Pandas literally cleans that mess up with just two lines of code. Then, as I said earlier, there's also matplotlib, or if you like defaults, nice defaults, there's Seaborn. A five second plot saves five GPU hours. All right, just, just listen to that. A five second plot will save you five GPU hours. And if your lost curve looks like a cardiogram, you need to literally stop training right then and there and debug. And what's great about this is that you don't have to wait for the barn to go on fire before you realize something's wrong, right? And last but not least, it's there's um there's sick sicket learn. And when I think of sicket learn, I kind of like to think of it like the um boring Swiss army knife. And what do I mean by this? Like boring is actually not bad, but it can be good too. I mean, I've seen people ship 30 minute random forest baselines that outperformed an expensive state of the art deep learning pilot. Like it's crazy. And so like literally just from that alone, you need to understand that algorithms from 2010 still print money in 2025, okay? So don't sleep on them. Okay, now let's put this all together. What does it mean to be proficient in all of this with Python and these four libraries? When a job posting asks for proficiency in like, let's say data analysis, they actually mean, can you load a CSV with pandas and still fill missing values without errors? Or can you use NumPy arrays to vectorize a calculation instead of writing a slow for loop. On top of that, you should be able to plot a simple class distribution or loss curve in matplotlib. And last but not least, can you build a scikit-learn pipeline, train a random forest, generate an ROC curve and save model PKA files, for instance? If you can do that, I think I, I, I'd say you're, you are checking off both the Python and data analysis requirements in just one shot. Now let's get to the good part, <laughs> math. Now, true story, true story. I dropped out of four different colleges and I say this all the time, but when I tried to get through college, I, I remember trying to duck every math elective that I possibly could because I hate math and I suck at it. Now I'm stuck actually learning calculus on YouTube and, really, and relearning all of this. But if I can handle it, I think you can too. Now, when it comes to math, I think there are three different parts that you need to focus on. There's so much to learn, but just focus on these three main parts. And I think that's all you need. Um, first of all, there's linear algebra. So when it comes to linear algebra, focus on learning vectors, matrices, and dot products, because everything in a tensor library is actually those three Lego bricks, but like in different colors, right? Then secondly, when it comes to math, focus on learning probability and stats, which means you need to learn means, variances, and distributions. And then three, there's, um, there's I think, yes, gradients. Gradients from calculus, which is what I'm learning right now. Now, you don't have to work out every calculus formula by hand, but I think it's just important to understand what a gradient is so back propagation doesn't feel like magic to you, right? Now, I think when you put all this together, all you learn all this math, what should you, should you actually expect in a junior AI developer ML role interview, right? And here are just some examples. You might get a, a whiteboard question like, why doesn't gradient descent minimize a con convex function, right? So these are things I'd focus when it comes to math and algorithms. There's so much to learn. Again, you don't need to learn this all at once. Take your time, but more than anything is, are you moving towards the right direction when you're learning all these things? Or are you just scattered your brain? Are you scattered brain and just learning everything left and right without proper direction and maybe not even putting anything together, right? Okay, real quick, let's take a pause. If you watched my videos before, you know that I like efficiency. And the truth is, trying to self-teach every single skill in AI or software engineering can burn you out. And, and I mean fast. And that's why I'm so excited that Springboard reached out to support this very video. And I mean, I took a deep look into their curriculum, mentorship model, and even their outcomes. And honestly, it checks all the boxes I look for in online career bootcamp. Some of the things they offer are like weekly one-on-one -on -one calls with fit industry 
professional. Like it could be a developer, machine learning, data analysis, you name it. And all these folks would be able to break down your mistakes and actually show you how to code better. Another thing on top of that is that I really like their, um, their project driven approach because every lesson ends with you shipping real portfolio ready projects. And the best part is that when you actually finish, you've got a GitHub repo that will actually help you impress recruiters. And then on top of that, I think the most important part is this, is that they've got a tuition backed guarantee where if you don't land a job within six months of graduation, you get your money back. And what does that mean? It means that they're confident you're going to actually get a job and be job ready. So look, if you're at a point where you just want to stop piecing random tutorials together, to be honest, Springboard could be the shortcut you've been waiting for. And since they're sponsoring today's video, thank you by the way, Springboard, you can get $1,000 off any Springboard career path through my link in the description below. So make sure to check them out and thank you Springboard for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the roadmap now. Okay, so by this point, you learned Python, you learned the uh, four libraries, you learned math, you're learning algorithms. At this point is when your books need to close. We need to stop depending on tutorials and start building, right? Because let's just be frank. You learn nothing until something breaks under your fingers, right? You do not know if you learned something well until you actually try to build something and fail and learn why it failed and improve from there. That's literally how every developer in the industry gets better at what they're doing by building and failing, building, building, and failing a lot more until you don't fail in that particular area. Right, that's literally it. So when it comes to this, when it comes to learning all these languages and tools, make it a goal to build as many things as possible. One example that you can probably try to build, and it's a little difficult, but I think this will teach you a lot, is you can try to build an image classifier. And within that image classifier, classifier log metrics in TensorBoard, which is great because you'll, you'll immediately have screenshots that you can put in your portfolio. Huge, huge. And then, as you build more projects, I think another thing that you can try to do is try to build like a capstone project that you invent. Something that not other folks have built. And it doesn't have to be impressive or amazing. Just build it for fun, right? Mine in particular was a mini GPT that sounds like me. So like I scrape my Discord logs. I tokenize with hugging face, fine tune the tiny GPT-2, and then I served it with a fast API and creeped everyone out. <laughs> right? So that, that was cool, but I think more importantly is this. That repo shows recruiters that I can wrangle data, I can tune a model, and I can containerize it and deploy it all without a DevOps babysitter, right? Now, I think this next step is extremely important because once you learn these languages and you build your portfolio, you build some projects, you will eventually get to a point where you hit a fork in the road. The problem here is there are so many different subfields that you can actually take when it comes to working in the AI space and just building stuff. But I think more importantly, more important than anything is when it comes to picking a particular subfield, focus on what actually intrigues you? What actually sparks your brain? What makes, what, what's actually fun for you? For example, if like language fascinates you, live in NLP, na natural language processing for a bit. Hugging Face actually has a free course that walks you from tokenization to transformers. And then from there, you can build a sentiment API and call it a day, right? If you're, if you're, more, if you're more visual, you can dive into computer vision. If you're a gamer like me, maybe go full all in on reinforcement learning. At the end of the day, deaf, deaf screams focus, scatter screams can't decide. So find something, focus, and go all in. Okay, so we made it to the end. Last but not least, I think the most important part is the 10 month, 12 month roadmap and what you need to do month by month to get a job, let's say by 2026. All right, so this is the roadmap. Let's say month number one and two, master Python B6. And then on top of that, learn to write CLI scripts that read CSVs, learn to freeze dependencies with virtual environment, Venv, and requirements text file, and then write a few PyTest tests. Okay, this is month one. You can do this actually within week one to be, to be frank, right? Um, by the end of week two, all right, you should be able to like, clone a repo you should do this in week one but you know give everyone has a different schedule you should learn how to run python so that should be your goal from month one to two then in month three to four 
this is when you learn the four ML libraries. Deep dive into NumPy and Pandas. Clean messy data sets. From there, learn to perform exploratory data analysis and build a simple linear regression model in scikit-learn. And what will that do? That will check off both data wrangling and basic modeling requirements when it comes to the job. Then when you hit, then when you hit month five to six, this is when you learn core machine learning algorithms and math, right? Master decision trees, learn logistic regression and gradient boosting in scikit-learn. Then from there, try to build a simple neural network in TensorFlow or PyTorch. And I think do it, build it just enough so that you can understand how, again, tenders work and how back propagation updates weights. Then when you get to month seven to eight, again, all of these can fluctuate depending on your schedule and how much effort you put in. Once you learn that, build two portfolio projects. The first project you can potentially build is like a classification model where you're using a public data set. And then the second project could be a basic image classifier, right? And, and, it, and it doesn't have to be as complicated as people make them seem. Then within month nine to 10, this is when you learn how to dockerize those two projects, three projects, four projects, whatever amount of projects you build. Write a Docker file that installs dependencies, then containerize your model and push it to Docker Hub, or you can actually push it to GitHub Container Registry as well. And last but not least, I think, I mean, all of this is important, everything, but when you hit month nine, let's say from month, month nine to 12, yo, y'all need to drill interview questions and I mean on math, right? On linear algebra, on probability and model evaluation. Make sure you practice whiteboard questions like explain gradient descent, sketch a confusion matrix, you name it. Just ask ChatGPT to literally test you on this. And as you're doing all this, GitHub again, just so wanna mention one last time, your GitHub profile, pin your two best repos to the top, and even make a one-page portfolio site. You can actually use GitHub pages to do this and make sure your LinkedIn reflects all these milestones. But anyway, that's it. That's what I'd consider college level curriculum plus real world polish all in one tidy package, right? Anyway, hope y'all liked the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.